hello in this video we will discuss about the pcr primer designing so how to produce the pcr primer designing and what is the importance of the primer we will discuss in this video so here is the length of the primer should be important because the length of the primer will depend because the hairpin formation we will discuss also and here the annealing and melting temperature should be important and the guanine and cytosine content will be important and the secondary structure of the primer will be important too much so let's begin to understand what is the cell in our body and how to amplify that genes so here is the person which contain uh, pancreas this pancreas contain a specific cell is the beta cell for production of insulin so that is we are going to detection for example the insulin producing gene so the messenger RNA are present during the transcription to translation uh, in the cytoplasm so that here is the DNA will transcribe into the messenger RNA and that go into the uh, cytoplasm so we can use the strategy for reverse transcription to become a DNA that DNA will equal to the gene which that is uh, the interest uh, gene which that is our desire for the checking the insulin producing gene so here is the aim for the GC content to be between 40% to and 60% 40% and 60% with the 3 prime of a primer ending in GRC the guanine or cytosine to promote the binding this is known as the GC clamp this is the specific primer for specific sequence so that is important thing we should need to understand the specific primer for specific sequence for the amplification of the DNA from the polymerase chain reaction so here is the preparation for the poly, uh, primer is the add the buffer primase enzyme guanine cytosine content and to produce the many more primers anyhow so this primer will be specific by the addition of the more guanine and cytosine and we can detect these things and here you can see the a good length for PC or para primers is generally around 80 to 30 basis specific specificity usually usually is dependent on length and annealing temperature so the annealing temperature the shorter primers are the more efficiently uh, they will bind or anneal to the target is more efficiently as well as on the other hand the higher melting temperature is very important we will discuss here so let's begin to understand from here how to produce the gene amplification so here is the messenger RNA we will separate during the centrifugation and in this way the messenger RNA will produce more and the separation is a different mechanism will separate uh, messenger RNA after the messenger RNA separation to reverse trans transcriptase enzyme add and the buffer as well as other things with the mixed buffer nucleotides as well as polymerase enzyme used to uh, reverse transcription of RNA into the DNA and this is the 5 prime to 3 prime anti parallel 3 prime to 5 prime direction is that we will denaturation and this DNA denaturation is the 95 degree Celsius to 55 degree Celsius is the and next is the annealing process and in this way the annealing process means the binding of the primer for ready to uh, extension of the RNA into the DNA formation and this requires the 55 degree Celsius temperature so in this way we should need to 65 degree Celsius melting temperature for the primer because primer will not melt during this 55 degree Celsius temperature so that is why it is very important the higher melting point of the primer will the more efficiently work so the try to make the third one is the try to make the melting temperature of the primer between 65 degree Celsius and 75 degree Celsius and within the 5 degree Celsius of each other the basis also impact that melting temperature governing and cytosine result in higher melting temperatures uh, then uh, uh, then adenine and thymine if the, uh, the if the melting temperature of your primer is very low so what will the uh, loss so the try to find a sequence will more guanine and cytosine content or extend the length of the primer uh, a uh, primer uh, uh, a little 
so the literal primer will be important on the other hand important thing is that the uh, thymine and adenine should be low because it's not able to more melting temperature resistance so here you can see this is the 5 degree celsius temperature up and down can be occur so it's not problem and dna is enzyme used to also produce the primer which that is the another mechanism we should not need to understand in this time but here we will understanding the designing of the uh, primer so it is that typically three to four nucleotides are added five prime of the restriction enzyme so that restriction enzyme we will use during so the added the five prime of the restriction enzyme site in the primer to allow for efficient cutting so the efficient cutting is very important and the number five is that try to avoid the region of secondary structure so the secondary structure we will avoid and have a balanced distribution of guanine and cytosine rich and adenine thymine rich domains so in this way important thing is that the guanine and cytosine rich and adenine and thymine rich domain we will balance distribution and the, in this way the, uh, try to avoid region of secondary structure so secondary structure will not add for the primary structure and uh, try to avoid the runs of four or more of one base so try to avoid runs of four or more of one base a new dinucleotide repeats so the repetition should be um, maintained uh, it means the adenine cytosine 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 will not good so on the other hand important thing is that the seventh step is the avoid intraprimer homology intraprimer homology means the inside the primer is the more than three base that complement within the primer so the within the primer that's complement uh, more than uh, three uh, bases that complement within the primer and avoid we should avoid from these things because the complementary uh, primer uh, complementary sorry bases will collapse together and uh, or inter primer homology forward and uh, reverse primers having the complementary sequences these complementary sequences basically will disrupt the primer and these circumstances can lead to self dimerization or primer di uh, dimers um, instead of annealing so instead of annealing it will become a dimerize so distress uh, uh, desired uh, dna sequences so here is you we should need to desire sequence so here is the hairpin formation will not anneal so the annealing process will be stopped so this is the mechanism we should need to non complementary bases in the primer because for the prevention of the collapse together to become a hairpin formation so here is the if you are using the primers for cloning uh, uh, cartridge purification as a minimum level of purification should be minimum level of the purification should be so if you are using the primer for mutagenesis mutagenesis means the mutation are present in our cell in our gene so that is try to have the have the mismatched bases toward the middle of the primer so we should toward the middle of the primer the mismatched uh, bases should be uh, middle of the primer is very important and if you are using the primer for a pcr reaction to use in the uh, in vitrogen topo cloning dimers uh, sorry primers should not have a phosphate modification so the mo phosphate modification should be not uh, uh, important so in this way here you can see this is a specific dna single stranded is the specific primer bind with a specific sequence and the amplify the segment amplification of the segment will be occur So here is let's begin to understand the polymerase chain reaction and what is the mechanism we will discuss and how to primer will be add. So here is we are uh, uh, get the EP tube and mix the buffer nucleotides 
nucleotides which that is the required and tag polymerase which that is the dna polymerase and aqua aqu aquaticus thermus uh, 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 bacteria thermophilic bacteria which that contain a tag polymerase enzyme we can uh, uh, produce by this enzyme so in this way dna sample here is the thermus aquaticus bacteria and here is a DNA denaturation 95 degree Celsius temperature will lead to denaturation after the denaturation the annealing process annealing means the 55 degree Celsius temperature is required for the annealing process because this primer requires the more temperature for melting of this primer for example the 65 degree Celsius so here is the again the temperature will be down uh, increase sorry so the 72 degree celsius temperature again increase after the annealing to extension and after the extension to become a dna double helical structure so what that means that means the 55 degree celsius temperature is required why we will decreasing the temperature because the annealing process is very sensitive for the higher temperature 72 degree celsius temperature is not working the annealing process so the 95 degree celsius temperature is used for the denaturation 55 degree celsius temperature is used for the annealing process and 72 degree celsius temperature again increase for the extension so this is the polymerase chain reaction will again and again in the thermal cycler used to produce the uh, amplification of genes so thanks for watching bye